they would include color, potentially materials, potentially uh, as much information as you have, and the costume designer would go, Jeff. <laughs> and that's, that's when I usually come into the process and start, uh, I guess, taking the visions of the designer and try to make them into a reality. And uh, every show is completely different. Uh, a lot of it depends on the designer. A lot of it depends on the nature of, uh, of the show itself. So, you know, you could be doing a show like at the Stratford Festival, working with a designer like Ann Curtis, who will give you about 20 detailed drawings of exactly what the shoe looked like that was manufactured in this area in England this year. And uh, it's like, okay, that's nice, straightforward. You take it, you can do it. So a lot of the times, you'll be dealing with something that's much more organic because it will either be not necessarily a specific period piece. Uh, and again, depending on the designers, some kind of leave the, the, the drawings of the shoes kind of vague. So a lot of the time then there's a back and forth, especially if it's, again, not a definite historical piece. Uh, so typically, say, doing a show with Sean at Kansas State or Stratford or wherever, uh, I'll meet with, with the designer, we'll go over the drawings, and from there start seeing kind of what's required and uh, incorporating a lot of the things that Sean and David were talking about, where how physical is the piece, what is the set like, uh, what is the movement going to be like, and one of the hardest things I find about being a shoemaker is always trying to be kind of three steps ahead of the game, trying to take this look, but also to foresee all the problems that people are going to have because the shoe is so tied to the movement and the actor that you really, you don't want to find out three months from now that the actor is starting to have back problems. You need to figure out what the potential problems are, try and figure out how to not make them a problem, not make them an issue, and then talk to the designer and say, okay, this is how I feel we can do this with keeping the integrity of the design. When you're doing a straightforward uh, classical theater piece, it's much less of an issue. You can usually get away with something very period, very pristine. When you're doing something that's more fantastical or much more physical, sometimes you have to do a lot of back and forth. Uh, with the type of work I do, uh, my forte has really become over the past several years the highly, highly physical theater. And when you're doing a show like Lord of the Rings, it's fine for the designer to have a very clear idea of what he or she wants, but a lot of the times you start seeing in rehearsal what the people are actually doing. And at that point, often other people start working into the, into the perspective of the shoes. And so for one pair of shoes, it might not just be the designer and I now, it's the designer, myself, the actor, the choreographer, sometimes even a physical therapist to just say, okay, this person is on this raked stage that has 18 elevators and is doing backflips and jumps that are, he's gonna drop 20 feet. What do we do? And that's when, that's when it gets interesting. That's when uh, the really hands-on work starts happening because you kind of have to go, okay, let's try this. Okay, no, this isn't gonna work, let's try and try and try, and uh, a lot of the time you end up doing, you know, 10 prototypes. The, the example of doing the backflips on the rig stage with the elevator was actually the orcs for the Lord of the Rings production here, and we did, I would bet, 10 prototypes uh, until we found something that was a good balance between the ideal aesthetic that the designer wanted and what the actors could actually do their tracks in. And uh, I don't know, that's when it's fun, it can be, frustrating as well, so uh, it, it totally does depend on, on the show itself. And, and as well, when you get into the highly physical uh, shows, a lot of the designers will actually bring uh, the shoemaker uh, into the process kind of early on to say, what can we do? You know, uh, what are the limits? What can we get away with? Because often I'll be able to maybe make a suggestion from past experience, which is not necessarily something the, the designer thought of initially, or might be, uh, I don't know, something, often there's a feeling when you get into really physical theater, they have to be in gymnastics shoes, but then you realize that, oh no, you don't, you can wear just about anything. And that's when uh, 
there's, again, a lot of back and forth to just decide what is possible for, and a lot of the time there are many more options than some designers uh, realize, which is kind of fun. You can do things like that. I mean, it's actually really interesting when you get into engineering, and that's really what it is. I mean, whether it's their costume, whether it's the footwear, I mean, we think of engineering as, you know, stuff that's hard, but, but trying, to, trying to solve some of those problems of how to allow an actor to do what they need to do while being safe, while being in control, and while fitting into whatever image it is that you've come up with. It, it's a fascinating kind of puzzle to solve, and it does mean that everybody's got to do that back and forth. And, and a lot of, I think a lot of drawing happens on napkins and on tabletops, you know, um, because you're just kind of having this tennis game of, well, what about if we do this? What about if we do that? And, and, and then I think also the part where the person doing the shoes comes into the fittings, uh, that normally, I mean, if you're working at a place like Stratford or the Shaw Festival, or if you're doing sort of one of the bigger shows where everything's built from scratch as compared to being found at the Value Village, which is, you know, a whole other reality, um, you know, usually you will do a costume where you'll do the kind of mock-up version, the first draft where you work it out all out, because the other thing about anything to do with actors and clothing is that no body is the same. So every body has to be, every costume has to be looked at in terms of how it works with that particular physique and height and weight and, uh, you know, foot problems, drop arches, not drop arches, you know, so that bringing in the shoe person to the, to the fittings, I, I just usually step back and say, put the shoes on, like, because they're the person who actually knows how to fit things properly. I would agree that probably the two of the most important uh, days for for the development of the shoes. I didn't. It took a long time for me to learn this, but were first fitting and first day of rehearsal. And I've started to, whenever possible, actually show up to that first day of rehearsal because typically, uh, or first day of rehearsal, first presentation of rehearsal when things are starting to take form because typically the shoes haven't been made at that point, and that's the first time when you really get, in, get a sense of what is happening on stage. Because there's a lot of discussion, but theater is such an organic process that nobody really knows until the people are up there, until the actors and the directors and the designers are all collaborating on what is actually going to start to develop on stage. So really, you can do a lot of figuring out prior to, but when you actually see how people are moving on stage, a lot of the times you, you get a very uh, different perspective and I think it really helps with the development as far, and a lot of that is more on the technical side, but just saying, oh, okay, so this is how this, how this actor is taking this character and is moving in a certain way, because uh, movement is so much a part of character, so that's really when, everything starts to gel between, you know, between the aesthetic and the performer and the direction. All of those factors can have uh, an impact on, on what's needed for the footwear. And you guys were talking about a fitting. Can you just maybe talk a bit about what a fitting is and what happens there? Because I'm not sure if everyone... Um, well, a costume fitting. I love costume fittings because I love that there's a kind of a, 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 a formality. Uh, if you're building things from scratch, let's say, like say if you are working at a, a place like Can Stage or Stratford, one of the larger companies, uh, and you're building things from scratch, uh, that there's this, uh, you know, you've gone over the designs with the cutters, with the wardrobe people, you've, you know, the fabrics have been chosen, but in the ideal scenario, you don't cut right into the fabric. You do do what's called a mock-up. Uh, or sometimes it can be referred to as a muslin, but normally a mock-up, where you're doing it to get a sense of the size and the shape and the proportion and everything. And, and I feel as a designer, it's very important to let the, the people do their job. So the cutter, I let them, like I just wait out in the hall, it's like being at the dentist office, and I say, just tell me when to come in, so that they actually have the actor in the dressing room. They get everything on, they get it pinned, they do all of their adjustments, then they, you know, I wait till I'm asked to come in. I like that part. Um, and then I, you know, come in and I look at it and we talk about it. And then we would, you know, Jeff would also 
put his, like everybody who are the craftspeople would put the pieces together. And then when I come in, then we talk about it, and hopefully I'm looking at David with his actor hat on. Um, to me, it's very important that, the, that I have a good communication and rapport with the actors, so that I want their input as well. And uh, that in that first fitting, usually to me that's the most important one because that's where you're establishing the, the real parameters and framework. And, and I've, I've been in situations where you've had an initial costume drawing that's totally changed in the first fitting because when you actually get to talk to the actor more specifically and you've got the bits on, you kind of might come up with a much better idea and, and change things. Uh, or you might... Um, establish if you're doing a show which could be a bot show where you're going and buying things, you know, whether it's at Holt Renfrew or the Value Village, although more often it's at the Value Village, um, <laughs> that, you know, I will bring in a whole bunch of different choices and we'll sort of play around with different things there. And so usually you have at least one fitting, but ideally a second fitting then to confirm that things are right. And if you're building things from scratch, and there's wigs and hair and, and things involved, there may be a third fitting where the first one is the mock-up, the second one is in the real fabric if you're building from scratch, the th but, in, but the real fabric sort of based it together. The third one is in the final thing to check it so that when the actors, you know, when there's the dress rehearsal period that we all know what we're gonna get. It's not a surprise. And the other thing, actually, I think, is that through that fitting period, it's very important for actors to have footwear in rehearsal. And I don't know, maybe you could. That's huge. <coughs> From the yeah. actor's perspective, typically, you, you first um, are, you are presented the picture of what your character will look like on first day of rehearsal. There are costume sketches that would include uh, a drawing of your footwear, but th and there might be notes about the footwear, and there might be notes about um, Quick change footwear does happen. It's, it's, it's not unusual to do a cheat like that where the, like say an ordinary pair of um, business shoes have, rather than normal laces, they've got elastic run through them to look like normal laces so you can actually get them off in seconds and get into another pair of shoes. Uh, so there might be a note about that on your costume sketch. And then um, as soon as possible in the case of an actor like me, if I can't have the actual shoes that I'm going to wear, in the show, and I'd like to know as much as I can about the shoes and see what the theater has in stock that is like that shoe, most like that shoe, uh, and if the theater has nothing like that in stock, what I might have in my closet that is most like that shoe, <laughs> if there's no luck there, then what I can find at Value Village or the Bay <laughs> is most like that shoe, because it will, uh, it will profoundly affect my, my feelings. Very often I feel like my, I, my character is in my shoes. Even if it's a very fancy costume, I feel like my character when I put on my shoes, especially if they're different from the shoes that I wear on a daily basis. So when you do a, a shop show, a bot show, that, as Sean called it, it's not at all unusual to walk in. Again, I just keep going back to the, the simplest sort of design, which is to say, it's a show about some businessmen and their wives. So you, you've got, you're buying some suits or maybe building a suit in an extreme case. And, you got ties, and you got these shoes. Uh, it's not at all unusual for there to be half dozen or, or ten separate pairs of shoes around on the floor in that fitting. And very often the designer will have a favorite saying, I'm really hoping we can make a pair of these shoes work. This is my idea of the kind of shoes this character wears. In, in the happiest of all possible worlds, the actor goes, oh, me too. That, those shoes look like my character to me too. That's exactly what I had in mind and slip them on and say, my God, they go on like they were built for me. <laughs> oh, they're so comfortable. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're laughing because that almost never happens. Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes it does. But, but there's, there's a bit of give and take there, and everyone recognizes how important it is for the reasons that we've, we've got a growing list of how important you know, safety 